In this video, we will be discussing how to disassemble and reassemble a motor so we can measure the bearings or replace the bearings if needed. So I have here a small electric motor and an assortment of tools ranging from hammers and prick punches, a puller set and some sockets and wrenches and screwdrivers. These are some of the tools we'll need to disassemble the motor. Before we get started, I'd like to point out that some motors on the nameplate or tag Right on the side of the motor is the codes for the bearings. This may be helpful if you want to order new bearings in advance before you disassemble the motor. Other motors may not have the bearing numbers printed on the, the nameplate itself. You'll have to disassemble it and then look at the motor, or sorry, look at the bearings themselves to see what the numbers are. So first things first, I'd like to make sure that my machine is clean and then I have um, some tools to mark uh, the different components as they come apart so that when I put it all back together I know the orientation and location of those parts so that it goes a little bit more smoothly when we put it back together. So I'm going to start by removing the fan housing from the end and also the fan. So I'll take note right off the bat here that the bottom of the fan guard has a flat spot on it so I know that it will go at the bottom of my motor. The next thing I like to do personally is put the fasteners back where I found them. That stops them from rolling away on me and it also helps me understand and see where they were. So I have a prick punch. I'm just going to make two or three little marks on the end housing and then also the stator of the motor so that I know that this half of the end cap and this half of the end cap are different. Some guys like to use paint pen. I find that if you use paint pen when you go to clean it, quite often times the paint or the sharpie washes off and then it becomes useless and you're not going to know which uh, component goes where. So let's take the fan off. <clears throat> All right, so we got four tie rods that hold the motor end caps in place. I'm going to loosen those off. I'd also like to point out and note that the tie rods themselves, the head of the tie rod is on this end and then we have a nut and washer on this opposite end. I'd like to put it back in that orientation when I put it back together. So that's the threaded end towards where the fan goes on the motor. Once again, putting my washer and my nut back in place. All right, so we've got a bit of paint and grease and stuff on the end of the shaft here. Before we pull anything apart, I don't want anything binding on that shaft. So I'm just going to take some um, paint strip spray and I'm going to clean off this bit of paint on the end of the shaft.
We just spray it on there and let it sit for a minute. And the paint literally just wipes off. All right, so I'm gonna take a dead blow and just gently alternating between one corner and the opposite, just gently tap on the outer edges of the motor cap. Okay, and there's our bearing. Notice on the end cap we have a little wavy washer. This is the floating bearing on the opposite end where our coupling goes is where the fixed bearing is located. This little wavy washer allows the rotor inside the motor to expand and this wavy washer will act as a spring and compress. We'll put this back over here. Try and keep things in order. Let's do the same thing for this outboard end. Uh, sorry, this is the inboard end. Woo! Got it. We have a little dust cover, keep dust and stuff out of the motor. This end doesn't have a washer in it. Put that back and I'll put that over there. Just a small bit of grease that they use when they assemble the motors. <clears throat> you may notice that this is a brand new motor and it might be a little bit of a, an abomination that we're taking it apart so early, but it is a opportunity for us to learn here. Once again I want to clean off any of the paint that is on this shaft before the bearing comes off. So I usually try to hold the rotor still inside the stator and I keep it there because it keeps it protected and from rolling around. So I have here a bearing splitter. It's a device, we have a flat side on it, on the inside we got a little beveled end. I'm gonna use the flat end against the outside of the bearing. A couple lengths of ready rod. Let's install this on our motor to take the bearing off. Because I'm using the flat side of the puller, this gives me the advantage of being able to support inner and outer rings at the same time, which then allows the bearing to have a possibility of being reused if it is still okay. So a couple notes that I'd like to point out when we're using a pour, uh, puller like this. One, we want to use a soft center so that as we turn this screw in it doesn't damage the shaft. The uh, soft center it's called will um, protect the shaft. Other thing, make sure that the uh, puller is right up against the bearing and that the nuts positioned on the rod are at equal lengths from the bearing splitter. This will allow the H-bar to be parallel to the face of the shaft and it won't get um, cocked sideways.
Once I have tension on it, I like to stop and just take a quick look, make sure that everything's still set the way it should be, and nothing's bending, nothing's twisting, nothing's moved. Okay, so I got the bearing off. Notice we have a little ring behind the bearing. We need to put that back in place when we reinstall everything. So I got the bearing off this end. I'm going to show you the second way that we can pull a bearing off. Instead of using a threaded uh, bearing removal tool, we use a hyd uh, hydraulic, a porta power basically. That's what we'll do to remove this bearing here. Using the same bearing splitter, Now, once I've got tension on this, I obviously don't want to stand in behind these pieces of ready rod. They can break and become projectiles, so I'm going to stand to the side and then try to limit the amount of travel that comes off when that bearing blows off. Once again, there's that little ring. We don't want to push against that ring. We want to make sure that the bearing splitter is positioned on either side of the ring so that it doesn't damage the ring at all or the bearing. Clean everything up again. Remove that bit of paint on the shaft. Should be done with our bearing splitter now. So you can see right here, there's a little groove. That's where that washer sits. And then our bearing itself sits up against that, just about there. So when we measure, we're going to want to make sure that this is nice and clean. If there are any nicks or burrs on that, make sure that the burrs or nicks are um, cleared off as best as possible using a very fine file or a stone or something like that. And we're going to measure that with a micrometer down to the nearest tenth of a thou. So a micrometer here, I'm just going to measure the outside diameter of that where that bearing sits. It's important when we measure this that we measure multiple locations and then take the average um, because even though it may look perfectly round and smooth, it may be a little tiny bit oval. Be sure to use your ratchet stop. Next, we're going to want to do the same thing on the inside of our bearing. Measure in multiple locations. OK, 
Okay, so once I've measured up the outside diameter of my bearing and the inside of the housing of the uh, motor as well to make sure that they fit properly, I can refer to the charts, uh, bearing charts that would tell us what type of fit I look for when we install these bearings to, to ensure that the bearing will be, um, the right clearances will be inside the bearing once it's installed because the fit between the shaft and the bearing and also the housing and the bearing determine what the clearances are inside that bearing as the inner ring stretches to go over top of the shaft. So let's put this back together here. I've laid it out in order of how it should go back onto the shaft. Um, right here, we'll start first with our washer. We need to ensure that we put things on because there's nothing like putting something on and then having to take it apart again because we forgot it. I'm going to lay the wavy washer inside the, the housing and we'll go get a bearing heater and we'll heat that bearing up. Okay, so once we got everything lined up, I've got my bearing heater set here to 80 degrees Celsius. Um, because this is a sealed bearing, I don't want to overheat it and burn the grease on the inside. Um, before I set everything up and put the bearing on and on the heater and get it ready to go on, I want to see which direction I want that bearing to be placed on the shaft. This bearing doesn't make a difference which direction it's placed. Um, some bearings do. I personally, if it doesn't matter, I'd like to put the bearing numbers to the outside so that if I need to replace the bearing, it's easier to read the numbers. I don't have to get a mirror or remove the bearing to see the numbers. So there's numbers here on the side. I'm going to place those in the little holder. Place the little induction magnet around or through the bearing. We have a little temperature probe I'll place on the inner ring of my bearing. And then I press start and wait for it to warm up. Once it's warmed up, it's a good idea to hold it in position with your hand, uh, ensuring not to rotate the bearing at all. Uh, that what can damage and cause burnelling to the bearing. So hold it in position. Once it's on the shaft and it's not moving, leave it alone until it cools and we can install the other bearing. If for some reason the bearing doesn't go all the way on the shaft and it gets stuck part way, there are only a couple of things that can be done. One, you can pull the bearing off and try to reheat it again. Two, if we have the proper tool, we can press the bearing on, as long as we ensure that we are contacting both inner and outer rings at the same time so we don't damage the bearing. So once this is up to temperature, the bearing heater will beep at us and tell us the bearing is hot enough. We can then remove it and quickly install the bearing. And I'll do my best to get it in position all the way on the shaft without needing to pull it off again. Okay, so because my bearing didn't go on all the way, I'd like to try and press it on the rest of the way or drive it on with our uh, drive up set here. Uh, I've already determined which bearing uh, I have. We've got a little chart, we'll refer and find the correct size um, end to go on our device, and then we can hammer the bearing on in position as this device supports both the inner and outer rings at the same time. So here we go, let's hammer this on. And we're seated, we're good. Hey, there we go, we slid all the way on that time. Perfect. So my bearings are cool now, let's put uh, this end cover back on. Once again, making sure that I got my wavy washer in there. I'm lining up the punch marks with the punch marks in the case. Just gently work it on the bearing a little bit at a time, a little wiggle. Okay. 
Once that on, that's on, I can put the fan on and in position. So when I go to tighten um, the motor, it's important to tighten the tie rods opposite each other just a little bit at a time to ensure that the housings on the end covers are pulled on parallel to each other and not at an angle. Now they're all complete, make sure it turns, motor turns nice, we're good to go. Thanks very much for watching.